Okay, we're at the bench here again. Now we're going to show you, I, I said on the, in my thread that I had made a coil out of silver wire from the radios, and that would be this coil here. Very thick silver, pure silver wire. Um, I added um, the 925 earring sphere, and I have a gold, electrical gold. This is not uh, pure gold, this is an electrical gold alloy uh, out of an RF amp. And there's my spark gap in between there, okay? This is all off of the secondary. I've placed a single turn secondary off of here. A Cat5 wire and a diode, okay? I have my voltmeter hooked up and right now it's actually reading, well, changing, it was 0.8, but um, when I touch this, look at, and all I'm doing is touching with my hand the silver wires and I'm up to um, already fluctuating to six volts it went up to my device winds up like a jet turbine engine again I touch this and um, six and climbing seven eight there's absolutely no input on this device period okay it's putting out right now just from me touching it almost nine volts over nine volts and I'll remove my hand as you can see right here again there's the voltmeter 9.5 remove my hand instantly it starts dropping down but not an instantaneous drop it unwinds like now down to 0.1 volts again I will touch the device instantly flies up to 7 plus volts there's not a capacitor in the system anywhere so we're at uh, 9.6 already and the more that this becomes interrupted, the faster it will climb, the higher it will climb, okay? 9.96, release, my hands free, can't see it, zoomed in here, there we go, hands free, uh, 0.6 volts, again, touch it, only touching, instantly, 7 volts, 8 volts, and climbing, flying right up there, it'll go over 10 volts this time, I suspect. over 10 volts and again release this is not what I was demonstrating okay like I said I've just I've just uh, I have the spark gap there that's it two dissimilar metals well two similar but different properties in the metals okay a big big thing in Madui another dinghy here some antennas you could think of it being like that um, when there's no source applied I get now Point two. Again, I'll touch it instantly. Uh, six volts. This is on one turn, okay? That's per one turn. And now I go and put a thousand turns on there. I get that voltage adds up. That voltage adds up per turn. They add together. So just me touching it. Um, eight volts per one turn times a thousand. Well, there you go. Whatever you like, right? No input yet. Now let's put some power into this little brute. We want to line up my spark gap so it's not such a large distance because um, it, it does arc but it fails if I don't. You know, this is, this is tricky because I've got one hand, you know, camera and all, and I don't want to get zapped. If I can get it on there. I don't know that's set up good enough yet. Now, even though it's not sparking and arcing at the gap, because it's not clearly not set up well yet. Um, I can pulse this. It's much better if I can get it set properly. I'm just throwing this together on the table to demonstrate this real quickly. So people can see there is merit to all of my work. Much more than meets the eye. There, we've got it sparking now. Okay, you can see the spark there. Okay. I want you to see what happens here, whether it's going to do it now or not. If I timed this correctly with the spark gap there, pulsing it from a source, it added up, which it's not. And why it's not, I'm not sure. Everything still appears to be proper. Well, bizarre, I'll tell you. 
not really set up properly for a good test. It's just on the bench testing here. And what I should move this because maybe I've got a bad connection somehow. There, that's fairly close on the gap. And, oh, there it's starting to spark. What happened before when I pulsed this was I got a, a wave, I got a voltage, and then when I pulsed it, it accelerated, gaining on itself. Now, what exactly has gone on since then, I'm not sure. My camera is energized. It's the only thing that's made any difference. Half the problem of this is I should have a magnet on the on the uh, back of the battery, so I'm not mucking around with trying to support the thing and do everything at all at once because it just does not work. Um, could be the meters confused. I could have um, the voltage. Could have set the meter off because yeah, it's clearly not. Uh, oh, wait a minute. My wire is off the meter, so that's part of the problem. There, I think I got my meter, my wire back on it. Okay, that's much better. Now you can see the effect that I was going to talk about. Okay. A single pulse. Mm, that's not what I wanted to see. What happened? As soon as I changed that meter, it did not want to operate the way it should be. You can see it on this one, in the low voltage mode. You can see it wind down. It peaks the meter out, that's the problem here. But watch. 0.4, and if I hit it again, I've got to make sure that this sparks. See how it's climbing? Now I'm over the peak of the meter. I'm over that range of the meter, and all I'm doing is momentarily pulsing this. Now I'll let it unwind, and you will watch as it comes back into the voltage. What's happening here is I'm accelerating the magnetic field of the toroid and keeping it spinning from, from a single pulse does multiple revolutions. My voltage per winding, one single turn, decreases. Now I haven't pulsed this in quite some time, I'll pulse it again. One pulse, we're over one volt. Two pulses, three, four, five, we're up into the off the scale. So you can see how my device winds up, voltage-wise, like a jet turbine, from a very, very, very tiny pulse. It makes it extremely easy to make this device self-running. Okay? Very, 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 very easily done. A silver wire, a spark gap. Again, I'll uh, fire this so you can see the spark. It's just tiny, but we're only running on 1.5 volts, 1.2 volts here. And uh, there's my meter per one turn wire. Okay, you can see. I'll try and get this again. It may, now we may get it. We see we're up over eight volts. There we go, four volts. See, now we're climbing 10 volts. These are just a few small pulses. 12 and winding down. So, if the timing was right, you can clearly see, um, and I've just quit pulsing it and it deaccelerates. This is not wound in any special means, any configuration, nothing fancy. Again now, I'll demonstrate me grabbing it with my hands. You can see my hands here, and the voltage climb. Not quite the way it should be now, it may have to do with the gap, but look at that. I'm using my left hand and I get a higher voltage and it winds down slower. Use my right hand and it's actually decreasing faster and spinning the opposite direction. That's pretty pretty funny stuff. Uh, right hand is drawing the voltage down quicker. Probably if it was at zero it would go negative on my right hand and it might go positive on my left hand drawing it down but not it's 
probably probably has to do with the direction of the winding on the toroid because it's now it's not giving me anything from my right hand my left hand touch it and it's not giving me anything well it certainly is a bizarre little toy um, could do with the spark gap there's there's lots of different ideas what can be taking place here but um, maybe the meters just hooped I don't know see about spark in it again spark gap set Sparking. Here's my voltage on a few pulses. 11, 17, 19. Oh, we're off that chart. And it unwinds. Okay. No capacitors. W.